Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about some rumors on Tesla's battery plans, as well as a follow-up from Alameda County in a question and answer release that they published yesterday, and some news on the long-range Model 3 for China. Tesla stock and the overall markets rallied towards close today, with Tesla finishing up 1.6%, $803.33, and the Nasdaq closing up 0.9%. All right, first thing today, just some quick news to round out the conversation on Alameda County and Tesla and their production status in Fremont. Yesterday we had discussed how they had come to an agreement, but that release was pretty sparse on details. Well, today we did get a little bit more detail from a Q&A release from the Alameda County Public Health Department. Quite a few of these questions addressed Tesla, with the first one bringing up a point that we were wondering about. What had Tesla changed from their original safety guidelines that Alameda County now feels comfortable with them? augmenting their minimum basic operations. The first part of the answer is kind of humorous. Well, not really humorous, I would say, but kind of ridiculous. It's, um, quote, the plan Tesla published over the weekend is their playbook for all their sites. The guidance issued by the state for manufacturing operations includes development of a site-specific plan, end quote. So they say then on Monday, that was when they received the site-specific plan. And then in terms of recommendations or improvements that Tesla needed to make to that plan, with this part being much more understandable, they say that in Tesla's plan, they had employee health screening happening at arrival of the plant location. They recommended or requested that Tesla do that screening before people board shuttle transport. They also say they, quote, provided recommendations and clarifications regarding how to notify local public health of cases and exposures at the plant, ensuring exclusion from work and quarantine protocols align, and strengthening mandated universal face coverings for all employees and other persons in the facility, end quote. I was critical yesterday for the county being vague in terms of what the safety recommendation changes were, so because of that I wanted to make sure to bring that up today. One of the other things I was critical on was what augmenting minimum basic operations really means. Well, on that piece we did not get as much follow-up information. Question number five in this Q&A was what operations will be allowed and not allowed at the Tesla Fremont plant this week? The answer was, quote, we are allowing Tesla to ramp up minimum basic operations in order to prepare for operations next week, end quote. Then they do answer another question specifically about Elon's tweet that they are restarting production against Alameda County rules. They say, quote, We have met with Tesla representatives and have confirmed that Tesla is not engaged in full operations, contrary to media reports. Tesla has confirmed that its operations require a substantial lead time to become fully operational, and their current operations are only slightly above minimum business operations, end quote. They then reiterate that the Fremont police are there to monitor if that is not the case. So still pretty vague on what exactly Tesla is allowed to do this week, what their headcounts can be, things like that. So I think we can take that as a pretty good sign that Tesla can do kind of as they need to this week in preparation for a more full restart next week. We do have various different reports of vehicles coming off the line though, so it does look like Tesla is still producing this week. All right, next up today is an article from Reuters that got quite a bit of attention today. The title from this article was, quote, exclusive. Tesla's secret batteries aim to rework the math for electric cars and the grid. End quote. This was a pretty lengthy article talking about Tesla's battery plans. A lot of this isn't new to us, but there were some tidbits. But because this did get a lot of attention, I want to cover all the main points. Probably most interestingly, they start off by saying, quote, Electric car maker Tesla Inc. plans to introduce a new low-cost, long-life battery in its Model 3 sedan in China later this year or early next that it expects will bring the cost of electric vehicles in line with gasoline models and allow EV batteries to have second and third lives in the electric power grid, end quote. We'll talk more about that in a second, but just to go through the rest of the key highlights here, they talk about Tesla's aspirations for a 1 million mile battery. We know, of course, about that. Tesla's talked for a long time about their million mile powertrain. They also talk about hitting the same price or less than the price of an internal combustion engine vehicle. That's often defined as $100 per kilowatt hour. Personally, I don't really love that comparison because I think Tesla's kind of already hit that with the Model 3, even without any subsidies or fuel savings from total cost of ownership perspective, the Model 3 is price competitive in its segment, and you could argue even lower than its competition at the higher end of those ranges when we talk about the performance model. So I don't love how that often gets defined as some magical number that you hit that number and you flip the switch. It's just a spectrum, and every dollar that you take off of the cost per kilowatt hour, you move further and further along in that spectrum. Anyway, that's nothing new. That's been Tesla's goal forever. They also say that Tesla wants to achieve the status of a power company. That's nothing new either. We've known about that since Tesla Energy became a thing. They also talk about how Tesla wants to improve their battery manufacturing for high speed, low cost, very automated. Of course, nothing new there. But they talk about Terra factories that could be 30 times the size of Tesla's Gigafactory in Nevada. To me, that clearly means from an output perspective, if we look at, you know, the output from 2019 or something like that. So again, nothing new. We've heard Elon mention Terra factories before, but just as a reminder, because I don't think 
A lot of us still really understand what that truly means. A terafactory is 1 billion kilowatt hours per year, which is enough for 20 million 50 kilowatt hour packs. So when we think about a terafactory, well, we know Tesla needs to be localized with their production, so we need to have at least three major factories on each North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. So if there were three terafactories, that could do enough battery packs for roughly 60 million vehicles per year. Of course, a lot of that would go to energy storage, but just to sort of put it in vehicle numbers. This is why I'm a little bit skeptical of the Terra Factory as an idea. I think maybe in the far, far future it might make sense, but along the way to getting there, to the terawatt hour production level, I'm guessing there's probably more cost efficiencies from localizing factories versus the scale that you get from having one massive factory. Nevertheless, the idea of the Terra Factory is something that's really cool to think about. Continuing on, they talk about Tesla's ambitions for recycling and recovering. Again, nothing new there. Then they mention going straight from battery cell to battery pack, skipping the module, which we've talked about. Elon mentioned that on the third row interview a while back. All right, so shifting back to that first paragraph and what really is the new information here that Reuters is reporting, they are saying that this new battery technology would be first implemented in the Model 3 in China later this year or early next, and that they would eventually introduce it into other markets. They say this new technology is jointly developed with CATL, though bringing a lot of Tesla technology, and that CATL is already hitting $80 per kilowatt hour at the pack level on their lithium iron phosphate batteries, which remember there were rumors about Tesla using those in the standard range Model 3 in China, though I don't think we ever got confirmation of those rumors. They also say that CATL is at close to $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level on their nickel manganese cobalt chemistry, so that NMC chemistry is more expensive than the lithium iron phosphate chemistry, but it is more energy dense, so that generally works out better for Tesla, but the theory was on the standard range plus at least, because the energy density isn't as critical on that vehicle necessarily, that Tesla was able to use that lithium iron phosphate battery from CATL. Anyway, a bit of a sidetrack, but those are all the things that are sort of discussed in this article. I think the most interesting piece is the fact that they're saying that the new technology would be introduced in China in the Model 3. I really hope that is not the case because that would make it really difficult to sell the Model 3, I think, outside of China if this does make a noticeable difference to the consumer in terms of the specs or the price point. The question, I think, comes down to how adaptable Tesla's battery production process is now to whatever this new technology is. Because if it's not adaptable, Tesla's not just going to write off the old battery production. There's still a lot of value to that. That's why we haven't seen Tesla change from the 18650s in the Model S and X to the 2170s that are in the Model 3 and Model Y. Those numbers are just measurements for the size of the cell, if you're unfamiliar. But if it's not super adaptable, that puts Tesla again in sort of a tricky situation like we had with the Model 3 and Model S and X. Then you just have people sitting around and waiting for those updates, and I think we definitely saw some negative impact on Model S and Model X from that. And that was with new technology being introduced in a new vehicle, which is much more normal than new technology being introduced in the same vehicle in another market. So I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are on this in the comments. I'll be curious to hear people's impressions of this. But to me, I'm a little bit skeptical of how Reuters is reporting this. But I guess regardless, it's going to be a tricky situation unless Tesla's current battery production process is very adaptable to that new technology. Next, we have another Reuters report to talk about. This is on the long range Model 3 in China. Reuters said Tesla, quote, said on Thursday it had started producing long range Model 3 vehicles in its Shanghai factory and aimed to deliver them to customers soon, end quote. It is kind of interesting that Tesla announced this quite a bit in advance of when deliveries would begin for that long range version. I think they had to have some lead time there so that they didn't have as many customers importing long range versions from the US and then being upset once that domestic offering was immediately available. That's my guess as to why they would do it, but as we saw with the discrepancy from roughly 11,000 vehicles being produced in April to the deliveries of I think around 3,600, that with some other factors may have caused a little bit of temporary rockiness in demand. Hopefully we'll see some better numbers in May with deliveries of this long range version now being imminent. Last thing today, I wanted to discuss a really interesting tweet from Elon. He tweeted out a graph of supercharger usage by region for Asia Pacific, China, Europe and Middle East, and North America. The graph shows supercharger sessions as a percent of max number of sessions on a seven day rolling average for the last 12 months. And of course in February, you see this huge drop in China down to 30% of max. And then a couple months later in April, you see the same drops in Europe and in North America. China had a really steep V-shaped recovery that happened over about, I would say two months there from January to March. 
and you can start to see the same recovery forming in both Europe and North America. Those V's are a little bit more U-shaped for both of those regions, but in all regions you saw that same dip to about 30%. Now China is back to 85% and actually had peaked at 100% in mid-March, and North America has now risen almost back to 50% from that 30% trough, and Europe back to above 40%. So it gives us quite a bit of insight into how travel is occurring and the shape of that recovery in travel, at least among Tesla owners, and a good demonstration of what Tesla has access to with a global fleet of computers on wheels. Anyway, that will do it for today. Still working on those Q2 delivery estimates. There's a lot of different things to kind of comb through, so spent some time on that today. Probably will tomorrow again and I'll get those out as soon as I can. But until then, don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, May 15th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.